Okay, we're starting our second installment of related rates. In this case, it's going to be related rates based on changing angles. Uh, the first video related to this was related rates based on Pythagorean theorem. I'm going to continue on using the example from the Pythagorean theorem uh, video. If you don't have that or if you haven't uh, watched that example, I'm going to show you the write-up and you should pause your screen so you can kind of diagnose what's going on. Um, okay, so right here is that write-up. I'm going to pause it, or you should pause it, and that way you can read this and see what's going on. Okay, so continuing on with that write-up, I have labeled the heck out of this diagram. These are all the labelings and information from that original scenario. And in that scenario, this part right here is what we found. So now that's included in this write-up. And we're going to add on to this now, and it says, at what rate is the angle theta changing? So there's that angle. Imagine it as the angle at which this guy's head is looking up at the kite. I know that's not technically the angle of elevation, but it's kind of. And now let's think of this. As that kite is being wound closer this way, is that angle getting bigger or smaller? And the answer is that angle should be getting smaller. And so when we get to the final answer, we should have a negative. If we don't have a negative, we know there's a problem. All right, so if this were a fresh problem, we would label the heck out of the scenario. And then the next thing would be go into your math past and figure out some equation that seems to relate to this scenario. Well, since I'm trying to find d theta dt, the Pythagorean theorem is not really going to work. Uh, but what will work is, do you remember good old Chief Sokotoa? which was when you were learning trigonometry related to triangles. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. Uh-huh. Well, that's a good thing, because now we can unveil a trig equation that relates to this scenario. And there we go. I've selected tangent. The tangent of theta is the opposite over the adjacent. So what we have here is opposite over adjacent from the good old Chief Sokotoa from the geometry years. All right, now you may be thinking, hey, couldn't I have used sine or cosine? In some cases, yes, and in some cases, no. But this case, you definitely could have. I'm going to show you other options here at the end. But let's go with this one, because this one's totally fine. So in, in uh, related rates problems, you label the heck out of the scenario, you choose an equation from your math pass that seems appropriate, and then you take the derivative with respect to time. In this case, that derivative ends up being quotient rule. So be careful because there's a lot of moving parts. Low d high, or sorry, I need to sing it. Low d high minus high d low all over denominator squared. Remember that when I took, say, the derivative of the high part, the derivative of the x was a 1, but this was with respect to time. When I took the derivative of the low, it was with respect to time. And something super easy to forget, when I took the derivative of tangent, it was with respect to time. So boom, 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 easy to forget. Once you're to here, your job is to solve for d theta dt in the midst of all this mess. Different people are going to go different ways, so I'm just going to show you my way, uh, but I'm going to point out something very important along that way. So here's my way. You could pause it and see if you can follow through everything on your own, but I'm going to point out a couple of very important things. So I'm going to cover up part of this. All of this, 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 and this are from the diagram. But where is this cosine coming from? 
here's the deal. Secant on the left-hand side is really 1 over cosine. So secant squared is 1 over cosine squared. That's a little messy. But what this is saying is I have a cosine squared theta in a denominator over here. So to get rid of something in the denominator, I multiply it as a numerator. And then I have to do the same thing to the other side. That's how that cosine got there. So I believe that will be some trouble for people. And now I have d theta dt by itself, which is good. But let's go to this next piece right here. All of this stuff boils down to that. But what is this? This confuses people. And here's why. So this is a very important point. In calculus, your brain has been trained to think of the unit circle. Sine of pi over 2, cosine of 2 pi over 3. Well, the unit circle is a little bit fake in that it only helps you with very, very specific famous landing points, like pi over 2 or 2 pi over 3. But the world is not always going to land at the perfect stopping points that we have on the unit circle. So in this case, when I have to convert that cosine, I don't even know what theta is. Here, let me find the original diagram for a second. Okay, I don't even know what theta is. So for all I know, it's pi over 3, but it could be 17 pi over 32. I just don't know. So since I can't use the unit circle, you would think you're stuck, but you're really not, because do you remember cosine back in the geometry days was simply adjacent over hypotenuse. So cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So in these problems, don't forget your geometry upbringing. All right, so from there, I can solve for d theta dt, and I'm done. Messy algebra in there, and a messy derivative. So in this case, I chose tangent, and I ended up using quotient rule. I'm going to show you two other paths, but there's probably far more than two other paths that other people can go. So hold on a second here. i got to find them. Okay, here's another path. So in the uh, example we just did, I used tangent. Uh, now you'll have to refer back to your notes to see the sketch of the diagram. But in this case, I use sine. Actually, let me get you the diagram here. So in this case, I use sine because sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse. Opposite over hypotenuse. So sine would work just as well as tangent. Um, you've got the same mess of quotient rule with respect to time, a lot of ugly plug-in. Um, notice again, when I have to replace cosine, it's not a famous stopping point on the unit circle, so I have to use my triangle Sokotoa stuff but I end up with the same answer I did in the previous problem. And I'm going to show you one other possible path. Okay, this is the final path that I'm going to show you, but there's still more out there. So I'm using sine again, just like a, the second path I showed you. And it's ready to do quotient rule. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. But if I do a little algebra, I can move that z over there, and now what I have is product rule. So I can do product rule with respect to time, and I'm going to show it to you, and you can pause it and just follow the algebra through there. Okay, so we had product rule. Here's the derivative of the first times the second, plus the first times the derivative of the second, all with respect to time. Find your information from the diagram. 
I was running out of room here, so I was getting a little tight. But the bottom line is, I end up at the exact same place. So know that there's a lot of different paths to go. Know that this is a pretty tedious method. And go ahead and practice them. Talk to you later.